When I first moved to Florida about five years ago and I set out to grow and forage 100% of my food, I was told I had to come see this guy. This is Josh Jameson and he knows how to grow a ton of food here in Central Florida, how you can actually live off your garden. So I followed what I learned from him. It was one of the big successes in growing and foraging all of my food. Are you into giving us a tour? Sure. All right, let's go. When I started getting into this in 2010, you could read about all these plants, but you had to pack up and drive four hours away to get a lot of them, or you couldn't get them at all. Mm. So what I'm seeing myself now as is this person that can bridge this gap. If I identify something that's interesting or other people identify something that's interesting, I go get it and I work on it. And if it's good, then we start replicating them and, and getting them out to people. So I have to say one thing in case anyone's wondering, a lot of you probably think that I know a lot about plants. It's like this much <laughs> compared to where Josh is at. And so I'm, I just wanna say, I'm like really excited for you all to get to know what Josh is doing here because I kind of focused on the basics that I learned from Josh and a few other permaculturists and, and growers. And that helped me to like literally be able to grow and forage 100% of my food. So like if you're trying to grow a lot of food in Florida, come in here, get in plants, uh, visit, you do nursery tours, some as well. Every right? other Saturday we do tours followed by nursery being open. Coming here and seeing these plants is one of the most powerful things you can do to really start to turn your dream into a reality as you see what is happening here. So uh, this is one of our vegetable growing areas and something we focused a lot on is collecting some of these what are considered lesser known vegetables in uh, the United States but are important vegetables in other uh, countries. One example would be taro which is one of the most important root crops in the world and through experimentation we've uh, found a variety from Puerto Rico that performs very well. We can get up to seven pounds on each plant. Of seven pounds? A food per plant. Yep. Wow. Um, over here we have some tropical, uh, various tropical beans. These are yard long beans, and this type of yard long bean can actually get to be over 40 inches. They're like <laughs> this long. Um, this is an experiment with tropical kale. I'd love to hear a little bit about this. This is a perennial kale, right? It's a breeding project for selecting new perennial kales, yeah. Okay, so how long can this kale live in, here in Central Florida, would you say? Well, I'm going to need some more time to tell okay, you that. Okay, he needs more time. <laughs> yep. Um, this, for instance, is a uh, sweet pepper that was the result of our trials with sweet peppers. And this, I had these get this tall. And there's these big, nice, crunchy sweet peppers. And uh, everything we're growing in here is grown under the same exact conditions that a one of you at home would have your garden. You can see there's no machinery, there's nothing special here other than some irrigation line, some logs and mulch, and this is all designed to replicate the way that a homeowner would grow, okay. and we're growing everything under those conditions to prove before we sell and promote them that they do well under these conditions. So this is Josh's new place, and you've been here for two and a half years? Mm -hmm. Just about. And I've traveled all over Florida. I've been to dozens, maybe even over a hundred places. And I've been here for the day and it is incredible. So I'd love you to tell us about like your vision here and what you're up to. So um, I worked at a, a different place called the Heart Village for quite a few years, um, which was focused on doing um, sustainable agriculture, focused on the developing world. Um, and helping people in poverty. And we made the transition to this property to a more local form of activism uh, where we're trying to identify uh, the types of crops and the types of strategies that can be grown here in the state of Florida um, to promote uh, small farms, home growing, and the whole kind of local agriculture movement. And a critical ingredient for that is having the, the right, the properly adapted plants 
Um, I believe that every local bioregion should have people that are trying to identify the best things for every specific environment. That could be even 50 miles apart. The environments are very different. So behind us, we have kind of a living landscape of all kinds of crops, such as this. This is banana. We host a collection of bananas. And a part of our thing is uh, doing collections and trials of many varieties of certain crops. So for instance, with banana, we have 20 or so varieties. And once we identify certain things are well adapted here, they perform well, we find that people like to eat them, uh, they fit the whole palate, as well as lesser known, experimental, unusual things, we begin then propagating and promoting those crops. So we have an online shipping where we, we ship live plants, cuttings, we, uh, we do seeds, we do now tours um, every other Saturday. People can come here and get an hour tour and then the nursery's open and we also sell at our nursery and we, we do events. So finding the ingredients to have a local sustainable agriculture in Florida and then trying to make them available to the community. And really what I've seen is like, like you mentioned, you find the crops that already do relatively, a lot of it's crops that you already know do well here, but then you actually work with them selecting the variety to find the ones that are going to excel the most, whether it's mm -hmm. the, the weather conditions or producing the largest crops, is that right? Right, and a big emphasis of mine has been in myself and trying to communicate to others, switching away from a European-centric vision of gardening and looking out towards Africa, Southeast Asia, um, South America, Central America, India, places in the tropics where people already farm this way. Mm. Florida is this peninsula that's sticking out towards the tropics. If you get on a boat and go down to Cuba, you're in the tropics. So we need to be A, looking to those, those climates for new crops, and we can dig into all kinds of interesting research, and also learning from the people that live in those countries and the immigrants who come from those countries. So if you look behind us, none of these crops are things you would find in an Ohio garden. These are all things that grow well in the tropics and can be stretched up into the more northerly location of Florida. So he mentioned that uh, he feels like he knows this much about plants and I feel like I have people in my life that make me feel like I know this much about plants. And some of those people have been people that I've gotten to meet traveling in the tropics and I wanted to take a moment to appreciate the small farmers of Latin America, Southeast Asia, Africa that brought these tropical crops into fruition and have stewarded them in some cases for thousands of years and still in the form of immigrants in many gardens across the United States um, have you know brought them into cultivation here and a lot of these for instance these cassava varieties some of them have been cultivated by immigrants here and another cool thing to mention is there's the world of plants is so vast that the closer you look at one thing you feel like the less you know and there's so many things out there um, just right here this is a relative of guava hmm. that is from a, a southern part of Brazil where it gets very cold so this is a little guava that's actually really tasty and can tolerate 15 or 20 degrees Fahrenheit that I've never seen in a different a garden other than, than mine. It's not known in Florida. Mm. And there's so many things like that that um, we could be growing. So um, you kind of have both these interesting things people have never seen if they come here, but also like the basic staples. That... Right, so to me, you know, longevity spinach, one of the easiest things you can grow in Florida. Um, we grow these pots that fit right into a little box and we can ship these right to your house if you can't come out for a, a trip. So you can actually get these in the mail. If you go right now and click by, this is what will go into the box, yep. <laughs> nice. I've actually never ordered a plant in the mail before, so it's kind of new for me. Yep, we pack them up real careful, and we also have seeds on there, and it all goes in the box. And Whoa. if you do cuttings, it all goes out, and it'll get there in two or three days. So Josh just fed me a little leaf that I have never had before, pandanus, and he said you can put it in a pot of rice, and it'll make it taste like jasmine rice. <laughs> I, you know, I, I know a thing or two about plants, but today's been just, a, for me, a joyous day of learning. And I'd love for you to learn from Josh, so tell us how they can learn from you. 
Um, so one thing is we do, uh, we offer the tours, which I mentioned. Um, we also have our website. You can go on there and read about all the plants. I've taken a lot of time and energy into writing these excessively long descriptions for the plants. Um, we also have some YouTube videos. And in the last six months or so, we also opened up a Patreon, which is a, it's a paid subscription service for creators. And basically you can sign up. It's ten dollars a month, which helps us keep this all functioning. Um, and uh, if you sign up for that, we produce roughly three hours of video a month, one lecture on uh, farming, uh, specific crops, uh, very deep dives. Uh, Sometimes we just did an interview with a vegetable farmer, those types of things, nice. and um, a cooking class with Emily, mm. and then a Q and A. Nice. So. Well, you've been here for just two and a half years, right? Yep. And it is genuinely magical and just, you know, so hopeful and exciting to see what's going on here. So, in the, you know, for now, you'll get to learn from Josh, but I have to say, I want to come back here in about maybe two years, two and a half years, and do another video and show people what it's sure. looking like then. How's that sound? You come in June when there's lots of mangoes to eat. Oh. All right. All right. Thank you, my friend. All right.